we have a whole bunch of young broadcasters from KBEM up in the city sitting here with us, and that's great. And I may scare them all out of the business. No, I wouldn't. It's 23 minutes in front of 2 o'clock here in the Henry Bussey Show from the Intelligent Choice for Jazz, KMSU Mankato. We have uh, 66 at the last reading on the thermometer downtown. This was recorded here in 1955. This is Doc Evans from 1955. I'll get into this because he can't hear this anyplace else. I have a lot of guests. I have a dentist that comes in on Tuesday. He's a retired dentist. He has to have a two and a half story basement under his house. We've been doing the show for seven years and he's never repeated a record unless he wants to. I'm one of the few places that can play 78s because he's got the original uh, Coleman Hawkins stuff recorded in Paris on 78s. He's got a World War II V disc. He brings all that stuff in here and we do that again. The thing, you can't hear that anyplace else. You may not want to hear that anyplace else, but you can't hear that anyplace else. Are you done yet? Soon. Okay, that was good. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a fun business. It means working. I've never done an honest day's work in my life. I've been doing this since 1953. I take that back. I take that back. <laughs> His eyes got very big. <laughs> Hmm. The bottom line is, this jockeys are a dime a dozen. Management looked at it this way. Salesmen don't cost them anything because it's 15% on how hard they want to work. An engineer we have to have. The, exp the expendable part is a disc jockey. Not nice, but sad fact. You know, I have no illusions. They let me do what I do because I turn money for them in a the fundraiser. <laughs> Only if they've got the radio on. <laughs> no. I don't worry about the campus. These kids are transient. I don't worry about the, the professors, their eyebrows. I worry about the guy driving the tractor with the tractor radios out there because they're all the time. You know. I can't I can't sit here and do a full blown hardcore jazz show in the middle of the afternoon in rural southern Minnesota. I play the Mills Brothers, I play the Ink Spots, I play Guy Lombardo. I'll come back to some of the jazz bands, but I've got to do that. It's a, it's more of a it's an you know, it's a, it's a it's a nostalgia mix for my afternoon thing. It has to be. I had to do a show like this, and while I was doing that, I had to do a 15-minute newscast. While I was doing the newscast, I had to record Paul Harvey, wind the tape back, and cue it up because it went on when I got done. Try that, run it through your head sometime. I mumbled a lot. <laughs> they finally said, you're a nice kid, but we don't understand a word you're saying. Get out. They took me back to Brown, put me in class for a while, and said, well, you're bad, but not as bad as we thought. They sent me down to, uh, they sent me here to Mankato. What that gave me, though, was if I was going to lose the job in Mankato, I would make a mistake that the whole town would remember. You're human, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to do one, make a good one. What the hell? You know. <laughs> <laughs> that just proves it's live, right? <laughs> and not Memorex. <laughs> but to really make it in this business, you've got to be able to do commercial work. Read, 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 read. If you get tired of reading, read a little more. And listen to yourself. Read something, turn it over, and ad lib back. And if you can't do that, and you don't know what the hell you just said, and you're holding onto the paper, how do you expect some clown with the average mental age of six I mean, they're not dumb, but they're doing other things when they listen to the radio. How do you expect them to know what you said if you don't know what you said and you're holding the paper in your hand? The bottom line is the music is nothing more than the mix to get people to listen to the commercials. You have to believe. You have to be egotistical. You have to believe you're the greatest thing since fried rice when you hit this microphone. You know, and if anybody, if they don't hear that, they only got taste in their, in their chops. You have to believe that. And you may send out a hundred audition tapes until you find somebody that agrees with you. <laughs> but you can't let that get you down, because that's the kind of thing you're playing in. <laughs> Besides, I got so many one-liners in my head, I can sit there and spit those while my hands are looking for things to go, you know, because I've been doing this for so long. Hmm. You know, it's a fun business. It means working. I've never done an honest day's work in my life. I've been doing this since 1953. I take that back. I take that back. <laughs> I'm one of the few places that can play 78s because he's got the original uh, Coleman Hawkins stuff recorded in Paris on 78s. He's got a World War II V disc. He brings all that stuff in here and we do that again. 
the thing you can't hear that any place else. I mean, I want to hear that any place else, but you can't hear that any place else. On Wednesdays.